on this computer. Okay, good. Okay, so then let's get started. So it's great pleasure to have Hicho Kim from Postex. So he's gonna tell us about brains and the swamp plant. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. So, so this talk, so today I'll talk about the brains and the swamp plant. And this talk is based on my recent paper with Gary Xu, Kumna Buffer, and Hori Tarazi, and Sheldon Kurtz. So, so if you have any question, please ask me anytime. So before we get started, let me give you a brief introduction to the Swamp Plant program and tell you some Beijing motivation for my works. So if you look at this, is basically the space of a consistent quantum field theories, which are unitary and have no apparent quantum anomalies. So these theories are all good theories before we couple them to gravity. So there are infinitely many consistent quantum field theories, as you guys know. One famous example is four dimensional and equal both a young male series with arbitrary single gauge group. They are all constant quantum field series. But when you couple them to gravity, the situation is a bit different. So some of them among these constant quantum field series, some of them can have UV completion in quantum gravity such as a string theory, and some of them don't. We call the collection of theories that can come from low energy limit of a quantum gravity theory, such as a string theory, as landscape. So this is the collection of quantum field theories that can come from quantum gravity. So this is called the string landscape. On the other end, the space of the theories that cannot come from quantum gravity is called the swamp land. So outside the during landscape, we have a vast area of the swamp plant that contains consistent quantum field theory as a low energy theory, but having no UV completion in quantum gravity. Okay, so the theories in the swamp plant is a consistent theory as a low energy effective theory. However, they will show some inconsistency in UV when coupled to gravity. So some planned program is basically to find right conditions that can, be, they can distinguish cavities in the landscape from the series in the swamp plant. Okay, so this is the basic idea of the swamp plant program. So we want to precisely identify the boundary between these two regions, okay, in the context of low energy effective field theory. So this is, as you know, the very challenging task at the moment because quantum gravity is not yet well understood. So we try to collect data from known uh, quantum gravity physics, such as uh, black hole physics and the uh, unitarity of the spectrum and so on, and try to reformulate them as conditions in low energy field theories. And then we apply them to rule out some seemingly consistent field theories that cannot come from quantum gravity. So we are basically doing this kind of things in the swamp land program. So the following are some main conditions in the current swamp land program. For example, no global symmetric conjecture said that the consistent quantum theory of gravity cannot have global symmetry. And we gravity conjecture said that uh, among other forces, gravity force should be the weakest force, and so on. And all these conjectures and conditions are related to each other. And I'll not explain the details for these conjectures, but among these conjectures, today I'll focus on the following two conjectures. One is the completeness conjecture, the other one is a distance conjecture, okay? The completeness conjecture basically says that the spectrum of charges for every gauge field, including the higher gauge field, in the gravitational theory is complete, okay? So every charge state must be occupied as long as they are comfortable with their quantization condition in gravity theory. And distance conjecture said that at infinite distance in the mobilized space, a tower of infinitely many light states should emerge. So a gravity theory will have infinitely many new uh, massive state at the corner in the modulized space. So today I'll combine these two conjectures together 
with the physics of the string pros in the gravity theory, and we will extract some interesting new constraint on the gravity theories. I have so, one question. Okay, uh, sure. What does spectrum is complete mean? Complete means that uh, each charge, so you can count, so basically we are thinking about uh, some quantized charges uh -huh. for the gauge field, and uh -huh. each charge sector in the charge lattice should uh -huh. be occupied. Oh, I see. As long as this charge is compatible with the Dirac quantization condition. So this is a continuous conjecture. I see. Okay. So thanks. such a state should exist in the spectrum of the low energy theory. This is a continuous conjecture. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, let me introduce one more conjecture related to this two. This is a kind of bold conjecture in string theory called string lamp post principle. This conjecture says all consistent quantum theories of gravity can be captured in string theory. Okay. As you know, many sample and conditions rely on string theory background, and so probably they can be wrong, a wrong statement for general quantum theories of gravity other than string theory. However, if this string lamppost principle is correct, then the lessons from the string compactification can be generally applied to all kinds of quantum gravity theories. So this is quite interesting and powerful conjecture, but we don't know if this conjecture is true or not at this moment, okay? But there are some primitive clues for this string lamppost principle. For example, the low energy quantum field theory with 32 spot symmetries are completely fixed by super symmetry. So in 11 dimensions, there is a unique supergravity theory. And we know this supergravity theory has a completion in M theory, okay? And in 10 dimensions, there are only two possibilities, only two supergravity theories. One is type 2A and the other one is 2B. And interestingly, they are also realized in the string theory as type 2A and type 2B string theories. And no, there are no other field theory uh, gravity theories with the 32 supersymmetry and 10 D and 11 dimensions. And also all other theories in the other dimension, lower dimensions with the 32 supersymmetries can be obtained by compactifying these two classes of theories, okay? So in this sense, string lamppost principle hold for 32 supersymmetric theories, okay? It didn't have to, but surprisingly, all possible theories with the 32 spot symmetries are realized in the string theory or M theory. So this is quite non-trivial statement. Another interesting example is a sixth dimensional N equal to comma zero supergravity. Here, two comma zero means chiral 16 spot symmetries. So this is a chiral theory, and this is also uniquely fixed by spot symmetry and chiral anomalies. Okay. And interestingly, this theory also has a UV completion in type 2B string theory on the K3. So again, with chiral shifting supersymmetries in six dimensions, string lamppost principle holds, okay? But you may say this is only for large amount of supersymmetry or chiral theories. But today I'll provide more evidence for this string lamppost principle for non-chiral theories and the theories preserving less supersymmetries. So this is a uh, uh, goal for today's talk. The goal is very simple. We try to find more swampland conditions by using string probes like this. So we put string probes to the supergravity series and try to collect more swampland conditions. Basically, we are looking at more precise, uh, more carefully at the unitarity of the 2D world shift on the string probe and combining this unitarity of the world theory with the swampland conjectures like completeness conjecture and distance conjecture and collecting all of them, we'll try to find or extract more new swampland conditions which constrain the bulk supergravity theories. So this is uh, our goal. And also this will presumably provide more evidences for the string lamppost principle, okay? But one remark here is that in this talk, I focus only on the spot symmetry theories and usual Einstein gravity theories in Minkowski space time. And dimension of space time will be bigger than always three. Okay. 
So this is my plan. I'll first talk about the 10 discography theories with the shift in sport symmetry. Then I'll move on to other dimensions, but still preserving shift in sport symmetry. And lastly, I'll talk about the sun plant conditions by using the string probes for the shift one comma zero shipography series. And finally, I'll finish my talk with conclusion. So any question? Okay, so then let's first talk about 10D 1,0 supergravity series. Okay. So 10D 1,0 supergravity theory is a chiral theory. It preserves chiral 16 supersymmetries. Therefore, this theory receives strong constraint from anomalies. In this case, anomaly cancellation by Green's Farris mechanism tells us that only the following four choices of gauge groups are allowed in this 10 d theory. One is SO32, and the other one is EA times EA, and EA times U1 to the 248, and U1 to the 496, okay? Only these four possible, uh, only these four choices are allowed in 10 d 1,0 supergravity theories. Among them, first two theories, SO32 and EA times EA models, are realized in the heterotic string theory. So they have UV completion. On the other hand, the other theories, uh, including the uh, abelian factors like this and this, cannot be realized in the string theory. Okay? So they cannot, they cannot come from string theory. They don't have a string theory realization. Then question is whether these theories can come from another quantum gravity other than the string theory, or they are somehow inconsistent, therefore they belong to the swamp plant, okay? If they exist, then, okay, Marcus, your question? Oh, uh, sorry, no, 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 all good. Okay. Uh, okay, if they exist, then some plant, oh, sorry, string lamppost principle conjecture will be broken even for this large amount of spatiometry for chiral. So these 10 theories are already quite interesting examples. So let's study these theories with the string probes, okay? So we will consider one plus one dimensional strings stretched along one of the spatial directions. So it's one dimensional object in the uh, nine dimensional spatial directions. And these strings are sources for two form tensor field B mu nu. And this string preserve half of the spot symmetry. So on the world sheet, it preserves 0, 0,4 spot symmetry. You can introduce them by simply adding the following terms to the action, okay, spot action. Here, Q is the string charge and B2 is the two form field. So we introduce them as a delta function source. So it's point source uh, in the eight dimensional transverse directions, okay. So charge Q string couples to this two form tensor field in this way. And this string states must exist in the spectrum of supergravity theory because of the completeness conjecture in the sample and program. Okay. Strings are charged object under the two form gauge field. So by completeness conjecture for this two form gauge field, this string state should exist. Okay. So we in this talk, we'll always assume this completeness conjecture for the string states. So such a string should exist in this talk. Interestingly, this two form gauge field transform non-trivially on the gauge and local Lorentz transformation like this. Okay. So this transformation rule is interestingly fully fixed by gravitational anomaly. So this coefficient in, in front of the local Lorentz transformation. So this coefficient A is fixed by gravitational anomaly cancellation. And the coefficient here for the gauge transformation is also fixed by the supersymmetric invariance and the gauge invariance. So these coefficients are all fixed for this two form gauge field. Then one important point is that this non-trivial transformation of two form field develops anomaly along the string world sheet. And as you see, string action here is not invariant under this uh, local gauge and Lorentz transformation, okay? So it means we have a non-trivial anomaly along the string world sheet in the presence of the string defect. 
This is basically anomaly inflow from the bulk to gauge field for the string world sheet. And this anomaly inflow must be canceled by anomalies of the degrees of freedom localized at the string world sheet, okay? Otherwise, this string configuration will be sick with non-vanishing anomalies along the string world sheet direction, and therefore the 10 gravity theory will be inconsistent because it contains anomalies in the presence of the string. Sorry, R, R is the, the, the coverage of war sheet? No, 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 the curvature in the 10 space time. 10 space time. F, yeah. F is the uh, field strength for the gauge symmetry, okay. bulk gauge symmetry. Okay, okay, thanks. And theta and lambda are the transformation parameters. Okay, okay. So then the R is the curvature of this box space time. So you just resix on the, the worksheet here. Hmm, sorry? So integral over M, M2 is the worksheet, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, right. so you just yeah. fix it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, this is a curvature. So, uh, in, yeah, so I'll explain more about this. Okay. So, you know, to cancel the anomaly inflow we saw in the previous slide, the 2D world degrees of freedom living on the string must have anomalies that is captured by following the anomaly polynomial, okay? P1 is Pontragon class. So the world curve, uh, sorry, space-time curvature trace of R, more precisely, trace of R square is now decomposed in the Pontragon class along the world sheet. And the second chunk class for the SO8 transpose Lorentz rotation, okay? So variation of this anomaly polynomial will cancel the anomaly from the bulk to phone gauge field, okay? So in this way, we can basically fix anomaly polynomial for the world sheet to the CFT, okay? So this is the anomaly polynomial for the world CFT, and it encodes many interesting quantities in the 2D CFT. For example, central charges are encoded in the coefficient in front of this Pontragon class, and the right moving central charge is nothing but the coefficient in front of the second chunk class for the SO8 uh, Lorentz symmetry because this SO8 will become the uh, R symmetry in the conformal algebra on the string world sheet, okay? And the KI is the two of anomaly for the gauge field. So therefore the world sheet degree of freedom should, uh, KI is always one and so as you see, KI is one. So all these degrees of freedom, they carry non-trivial charges on the bulk gauge, older bulk gauge uh, symmetry, okay? Okay, and also this anomaly polynomial involves the central mass degrees of freedom. So we have to subtract this degrees of freedom, uh, the contribution from this degrees of freedom. Central mass consists of A scalars for the transverse motion of the strings, and A fermions, which is the eight broken supersymmetries in the presence of the string. And from this central mass mode, we have the central charge contribution. So we have to subtract this central mass contribution from the central charge we computed from the anomaly polynomial, okay? After removing central mass part, the interacting CFT has the central charge as follows. So left moving central charge is 16, and right moving sector is empty, and two anomaly for every gauge group is plus one, okay? And this two anomaly will play very important role in the next slide. So two anomaly being one and it's positive basically implies the 2D world theory should contain current algebra for the every bulk gauge group, okay? And also the current algebra should have level one, and it's positive, it means this current algebra is realized in the left moving sector, okay? And in world sheet, if we have current algebras, as you know, the current algebra in WGW model contribute to the central charge non-trivially. For example, the unitary representation of level K current algebra for gauge group G has the following non-trivial central charge contribution, okay? So for example, for E8, so K is a level, and D, this is dimension of the gauge group, and H check is the dual Cox sector number. Okay. So for each current algebra, we have central charge contribution, Cg. This is A for E8, 
and SO30, for SO30, it's 16 when K is 1. Sorry, I forgot. So when level is 1, for E8, we have uh, 8, so central charge contribution 8. And for level 1, SO32, current algebra, we have a 16 contribution. And for each U1, we have contribution plus 1. Okay. And also, this central charge contribution for any K, it's always bigger than or equal to the rank of the gauge rule. Okay. Then we find the unitary condition, unitary condition for this world CFT, because each current algebra contributes non-trivially to the central charge, and they are realized that every current algebra in this study are real, is realized in the left moving sector. Therefore, some of all the central charge contributions coming from the current algebra must be less than or equal to left moving central charge because this is the total central charge counting the degrees, free, degrees of freedom in the left moving sector. Okay? So it means rank of the gauge group. This gauge group is basically bulk gauge group. Strings, strings coupled to the bulk gauge group, and that's why they have current algebra. And this rank of the gauge group should be less than or equal to the total left moving central charge. So this is a simple unitary condition on the string world. And we computed the central charge from the anomaly inflow. It was a 16. Therefore, the bulk gauge group should have rank less than or equal to 16. Otherwise, the string cannot host the current algebra because if this bound is violated, if some central charge contribution is bigger than left moving central charge, it means the string world sheet cannot support such a big central charge for the current algebra of the given gauge group and the levels, okay? So it means string state can only consistently couple to 10 dish for FT if rank of the gauge group, bulk gauge group is less than or equal to 16, okay? And such a string state should exist due to the completeness conjecture. Therefore, we can rule out supergravity theories with the rank bigger than 16. Okay? They are inconsistent because they will contain some non-unitary string configuration violating this unitary bound. Okay? So if you look at the tender theory with E8 times E8 or SO32 gauge symmetry, then you can usually see their contribution is 16. Their current algebra contribution is basically 16. So it saturates the rank bound. So they are fine. On the other hand, if you look at the tender theories with uh, this gauge group, because of this abelian factors, we have too many abelian gauge group, and string world sheet should have current algebra for each abelian gauge symmetry, and their contribution is always one, okay? So their contribution to the central charge will violate this unitary bound. Therefore, we can say these tender theories with these abelian factors are inconsistent, and they belong to the swamp plan. Okay, so this is a basic idea to exclude some consistent looking low energy theories by using string probes. Okay, and there are some, uh, there is a, another argument to saying that these theories are inconsistent by these people. Okay, so by using strings, we excluded some consistent looking tandy supergravity theories with the gauge group. Okay, so it means only these two theories are consistent supergravity theories, and they are all realized in the string theory as a heterotic string theory. So string lamppost principle hold in Tandy 1,0 supergravity theories. Any question? Okay, let's uh, move on to the other dimensions, but still preserving 16 supersymmetry. Unlike Tandy theories, supergravity theories in dimension less than 10 and unchiral theories. And since they are unchiral, there is no constraint from anomalies. So, so they can have, in principle, arbitrary gauge group. In particular, arbitrary large rank is allowed. So we have infinitely many constant supergravity theories preserving 16 supersymmetry in dimension less than 10. On the other hand, 
string compactification allows only the quantum field series with the rank less than or equal to 26 minus D. Okay, so this is the full classification in 90, 80, and 7 dimensions from the string compactifications. As you see, in nine dimensions, the biggest rank is 17, and in 80, it's 18, and 70, it's 19. They saturate this bound. Okay, there are no other series beyond this rank okay, in string compactification. And this biggest rank series are all coming from the Freudian compactification of the heterotic strings. Okay, so this classification was discussed in these papers. And there is a sharp constraint, <coughs> contrast between the number of uh, possible theories in the string compactification is finite. On the other end, if you look at just the low energy superlative theory, it seems that we have infinitely many superlative theories. So there is a very big contrast between these two. So it seems that string Lampos principle is violated even with the 16 uh, supersymmetries. And we'll again consider BPS strings. So all these 16 supergravity, uh, sorry, supergravity series in dimension less than 10 with the 16 supersymmetry has two form gauge field. So we can consider BPS strings coupled to such two form field. And completeness conjecture for this two form field ensures the existence of these string probes. Okay. Again, two form transforms non trivially under gauging and local Lorentz transformation. However, unlike 10D theories, these theories are non-chiral theories, okay? Therefore, this coefficient in front of the local Lorentz transformation is not determined because there is no chiral anomaly, okay? On the other end, this coefficient in front of the gauge transformation is fixed by supersymmetry and gauge transform, uh, gauge invariance, okay? And this coefficient is given by this SORG, comma D minus D, as 10 minus D invariant metric. So important point is that this coefficient in front of a local Lorentz transformation is not fixed in this case in dimension less than 10, okay? Again, we can compute the anomalies of the world CFT living on the strings by using anomaly inflow from the bulk theory. For a single string, then the result is given by this. So the string world CFT should have this anomaly polynomial. And as you see, the two anomalies and the central charges encoded in this anomaly polynomial is fixed by this unknown coefficient A. Okay, two anomaly is already fixed, but the central charges uh, determined by this coefficient A. A is quantized because it's coefficient in front of second chunk class of SOD minus two Lorentz transformation. So by using this anomaly inflow, we can compute the central charges of the world CFT. It's again determined by this coefficient A. And again, this Im result involves the central mass contribution, and you can easily compute the central mass contribution. It's given by this vector, and we have to subtract this contribution from this central charge to get the central charge for the interacting safety. And two anomalies are again very important. It's given by omega with the signature like this. And important thing is this, positive signature. Positive signature is, so number of positive signature is given by RG, and it basically implies that the world CFT should host current algebra for every bulk gauge symmetry, and it should be realized in the left moving sector, okay? Again, this current algebra will contribute to, to the left moving central charge by this vector, which is always bigger than the rank of, bigger than or equal to the rank of the gauge group. Okay. Because of this current algebra, again, we have a unitary bound for the unitary world theory on the zero comma A string. The bound is given by this after subtracting central mass contribution. So bulk gauge group can have rank less than or equal to 24 times A plus two minus D. But to get the precise bound, we need to determine this coefficient A. A is positive, uh, non-negative integer number. Okay. I have one question. So okay. even previous case, when you, when series saturate this bound, so does it mean the left moving sector is always um, written in terms of this uh, current algebra? 
Yes, yes. Oh, I see. So for example, in the previous case, uh, like the 10 day heterotics yeah, case, yeah. we have just eight fermions. They yeah. form a current algebra for the EA times EA, or oh, uh, sorry, 16 fermion mode. Uh -huh. And they basically uh, form a current algebra for EA times EA, or SO32. Oh, I okay. see. And, and the right moving They only the uh, degrees of freedom. Oh, I see. So, and the right moving sector is just uh, n equal to empty. eight. But Let Right moving sector is empty. They it, contains only central mass degrees of freedom. It's empty. Empty. Yeah. In the previous example, in this example, it depends okay. on a. Previous example, it's right moving sector empty, and left moving empty. sector is the some current, current algebra. algebra. E8 yeah. cross E8 or SO32. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. But can you consider like a modular invariance between them and so on? The right yeah. moving sector is empty means. It's more like a S matrix, ST matrix is trivial. Is it, that, does it mean? Uh, sorry, we, so okay. modularity should act only on the left moving sector. Okay, but can you consider like a modular invariant partition on a torus for this theory? So for example, in the previous example, yeah. this uh, uh, examples I realized in the heterotic string theory, uh -huh. okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. In that case, you can basically compute the partition function and show the modular invariance. But in oh. the case, usually, if you include the central mass degrees of freedom over oh. the current algebra. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Any other question? So, to get the precise rank bound, we need to determine the coefficient A. Now, I will show you that. A is fully determined by using distance conjecture in the sampling program. A is actually one or zero. Okay, I will show this by using distance conjecture. So distance conjecture said that at infinite distance in the moduli space, like this corner and this corner and this corner, uh, we we must have the infinite tower of light states. Okay, and also distance conjecture predict an infinite tower of the light state at this point whose masses are exponentially suppressed by this scalar value. So this is basically a scalar moduli space. At infinity in this moduli space, some of the scalar fields have infinite BEV, and there must be light state at each corner whose masses are exponentially suppressed by this scalar expectation, large scalar expectation value. Okay. And also it predict a new, around this point, the old uh, original, the effective description will break down because of this infinite number of new light states. Therefore, this distance conjecture predict a new weakly coupled description whose basic mode includes this tau of light state. So this is distance conjecture. At each corner, we expect new weakly coupled dual descriptions. And now we shall consider circle compactification of this theory to d minus one dimensions along a circle with radius r. And on the circle compactification, this radius r also becomes one of the scalar moduli. And we'll take the limit r goes to zero. This is a, basically at infinite distance in the moduli space in the compactification, okay? And as predicted from distance conjecture, distance conjecture basically predicts a new uh, infinitely many light state, and as conjectured, we have such light state. They are nothing but the winding string states around the circle. Okay, they become the light because their mass is proportional to this radius of the circle, and we are taking r to uh, zero limit. Okay, and also the moduli space of this theory with the 16 supersymmetry is not renormalized because this 16 supersymmetry strongly constrains the moduli space. And together with this uh, non renormalizability of the moduli space and the distance conjecture, we can say that this light winding state should be identified with the KK momentum state of the graviton in the dual theory. Okay, so distance conjecture with the 16 supersymmetry basically predict T-duality, which exchange winding string states along the circle, wrapping along the circle, and the KK momentum state in the dual D-dimensional theory. Okay. So distance conjecture basically predict this T-duality. 
in addition, in this paper, they said that spectrum of this winding string state should contain a ground state in the Ramon sector with spin JR, which is the same as C right mode six, okay? And we computed the right moving central charge. It was 12A. So there must be winding string state with spin 2A, okay? And in the previous slide, we said that distance conjecture T-duality that exchanged the winding state, winding string state with the graviton state, KK momentum state in the gravity multiplet. But as you know, graviton state can have spin at most two. So to have this T-duality, this spin should be less than or equal to two. So it means A should be one or zero. So we fixed A by using distance conjecture together with this result in this paper, okay? Then A equals one, let's first look at A equals one case. In this case, after removing central mass contribution, the central charge for the zero A or the CFT is determined. After removing it, the left moving central charge is 26 minus D, and right moving central charge is again empty. Then the unitarity of the world CFD, they receive contribution, so world CFD receive contributions from the current algebra for each bulk gauge group. So we have to import, uh, we have some non-trivial unitary bound on the rank of the bulk gauge group. The bulk gauge group should be less than or equal to 26 minus D. This is basic unitarity condition on the string world to host such big current algebra that couple to the bulk gauge symmetry, okay? So when A equals to one, we have the upper bound for the rank of the bulk gauge group, which is 26 minus D. And interestingly, this bound perfectly agrees with the bound in the string compactification as we saw. So we derived this string theory bound just by using string probes in the general supergravity series. There is another possibility when A equals zero. When A equals zero, we found that the world CFT has enhanced A comma A supersymmetry, okay? In the previous analysis, we assumed the world CFT preserves zero comma A, but when A equals one, world CFT has bigger symmetry, bigger supersymmetry, it's A comma A supersymmetry, and we have to do the same analysis, and we did it, and we found another upper bound for the rank of the bulk gauge group. It should be less than or equal to 10 minus D, but these theories are all involved in this theory. So we claim by using only the supergravity and the string probes, the, we found another bound, some planned bound on the rank of the bulk gauge group given by this. And it agrees with the string theory bound. So we claim the spogravity preserving 16 supersymmetry in dimension, in D dimensions, with the rank bigger than 26 minus D belong to the sum plan. Okay. And as I said, this bound agrees with the string theory bound. And this provides another strong evidence for the string Lampos principle. Previously, we didn't have any bound on the rank of the bulk gauge group before we used this string probes. So it seems that string Lepo's principle is severely violated, but it's not. Actually, the charged strings for the two-point gauge field can provide more bound or some strong bound on the rank of the gauge group. So for example, n equal 4, 4D super young mills with SUN gauge symmetry cannot consistently couple to 4D gravity if n is bigger than 26, uh, 23, okay? But we should be careful. This doesn't mean the constant quantum gravity cannot engineer for the n equal for uh, SUN, super young mills, with the rank n or n bigger than 23. So we should be careful because as you know, they realized that the quantum field theory is describing n these three brains in type 2b string theory, okay? However, this theory can couple 10 d super gravity consistently, not the 4D gravity. So we have to distinguish these two cases. So our bound works only for the gravities coupled to the gravity in the same dimensions. Okay. 
So anyway, so, um, we had a very interesting lesson from string. Uh, uh, okay. So how can we say this is a 4D, not 10D from previous derivation? So previous in previous derivation, we didn't assume any dimension. The, this D is a dimension. Okay, we assume dimension is less than 10 and bigger than three. Yes. For any dimension, by using string probes, we found this upper bound for the rank of the bulk gauge group. Oh, yes, my question is, uh, um, you just mentioned that this is a, uh, can couple with 10D but not 4D. Uh, from the previous derivation, how can we see this? In previous uh, derivation, we assumed D-dimensional super gravity series with the gauge group. Okay, so if we put D to be four, Oh, I see. Here, these and it means this supergravity theory is four-dimensional supergravity theory coupled to four D uh, gravity. I see. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So it seems the string Lepos principle is supported by this string analysis. Okay. Lastly, let's move on to six D one comma zero supergravity theories. Uh, any other question? So, <laughs> 6 d one comma zero supergravity theory is a chiral theory preserving A supersymmetries. It consists of the gravity multiplet, including uh, what is metric and self dual two form field, and tensor multiplet, including anti self dual tensor field and one scalar field. One scalar field, this one parameterized the tensor moduli space. And vector multiplet contains vector, and hyper multiplet contains some scalar field and their phenomenal patterns. Here, TVH simply denote the number of tensors and vectors and hypermultiplets. Okay, so 0 supergravity theory is determined by choosing number of tensor field and also type of the gauge symmetry and the representation of the hypermultiplets under the gauge transformation. Since it's chiral theory, we have chiral anomaly, so we have some constraint coming from the anomaly cancellation. One of anomalies from the chiral field. So here we have lots of chiral field from the chiral two-form field and the chiral fermions. Their contribution can be canceled by Grinch-Furch segnoty mechanism if this one of anomaly factorizes in this way. Okay, so this is factorization. So if one anomaly can, fact, can be factorized in this way, then we can put the Grinch-Furch term to cancel this anomaly. Here X4 is a combination of the Pontragon class and the second chunk class is for the gauge field. And here omega is the symmetric bilinear form for T plus one tensor field and A alpha, the coefficient here, and B alpha I here are vectors in the R one comma D tensor space. Okay. So this factorization condition provides us lots of constraint on these symmetric bilinear forms and vectors. And if we can find some solution for this factorization condition for this uh, bilinear form and vectors, then Schicht-Dich Pogrepti theories have no anomalies because it's canceled by green sparse mechanism. In addition, there is one constraint. The charge lattice gamma for T plus one to form tensor field should be unimodular, okay? It's basically the Dirac quantization condition for the charged strings under the two-form gauge field. So if these two conditions are satisfied, then the shift supergravity theory is a consistent theory as a low energy effective theory. Okay, but we don't know if they really have UV completion or not at this moment. But as a low energy theory, they are good theories if there is no anomaly. And in this paper and other papers, they found infinite families of anomaly-free and unimodular n equal one comma zero Schicht-Dich supergravity series. For example, in this paper, they listed these two infinite families. So first family is for the series with nine tensors and SUN times SUN gauge symmetry and two by fundamental hypermultiplets. And this is series anomaly-free for any n. Okay. So we have infinite number of anomaly-free 
subject dish for gravity theories of this type. However, at this moment, string theory construction is known only for the case when n is less than or equal to a. Second class is the theory of 8k plus 9 tensors with k e8 gauge symmetries. And this theory is also anomaly free for any k. Okay? However, the UV completion is known only for k equal 1 and 2 cases. Again, for these two infinite classes, it seems that the string lamppost principle is broken. But by using string proofs, we will see what happens. Yeah. And shift 1, 0 supergravity theories can be engineered in F theory compacted by the elliptical labia threefold. But the number of such theories is finite because it's proven that the number of elliptical labia three is finite. So not only these two infinite classes, but if uh, there are more infinite classes in the six dimensions, then it will again violate the string lamppost principle. Okay. But we'll study for example, for these two infinite classes by using string probes and basically we will kill almost all these theories and show that still there is a chance for the string lamppost principle. Okay, we will use the BPS strings. Okay, we will consider these strings on the tensor moduli space parameteri parameterized by the scalar field in the tensor multiplets. And the world theory on these strings will flow to the zero comma a chiral superconformal field theory at low energy. Okay, the symmetry of this world theory is given by this. So it has S to R symmetry, which is one of the SO4 Lorentz symmetry transpose to the uh, string, and S to L is another Lorentz symmetry, but it becomes flavor symmetry or global symmetry in the world CFT. And this string can couple to the bulk gauge symmetry. So flavor symmetry is given by SU to lab times some gauge group G, which is a subgroup of the bulk gauge symmetry. And SU to L is R symmetry of the IR, 0, 4 component algebra. In type 2B theory or F theory, such a strings are coming from the D3 brains wrapped around the holomorphic two cycles like this. So curve C is the holomorphic two cycle, and B4 is the base a uh, four manifold in the elliptical labia threefold. So they are basically, so these strings are the D3 brains wrapping some cycles in the internal uh, four manifold. Okay, so we'll study such a string configuration. We'll analyze uh, the unitarity of the strings and see if we can extract some constraint on the bulk gravity theory. Again, anomalies of the world series can be easily computed by using anomaly inflow. And this paper has already computed it. And we can extract the central charges of the world CFT from the anomaly inflow. And for such as strings in Shikti Spogravity series, central charges and levels for the current algebras of the global symmetry can be obtained in this way. So left moving central charge is this, and right moving central charge is this. And level for the SU to left is this, and level for each gauge symmetry is given by this. So as you see, central charges and levels are all fixed by this string charge Q and A and B. They are nothing but the solutions to the anomaly cancellation. So by knowing the shift uh, supergravity theory, bulk theory, you can basically compute the central charges for the world CFT on each string with the charge Q. Okay. So we are, we are interested in very particular string configuration satisfying these four conditions. Okay, so it means they are basically unitary theories and such a strings exist in the supergravity theory. So such a strings we call as a supergravity string. Okay. So the first two, co two conditions are nothing but the central charges are not negative. So it's a usual unitary condition. And second two conditions basically means the current algebra in the string world sheet are realized in the left moving sector. Okay. Then we have another unitary bound on this world uh, safety for the strings because uh, each is, uh, current algebra for the flavor symmetry will contribute to, to the central charges. So this is the central charge contributions from the current algebra for the flavor symmetry as to left and gauge symmetry. 
and their contribution should be summed up, but to, should be less than or equal to left moving central charge. This is again similar unitary condition we saw in other examples with the shift transport symmetry. So we have, we derived this unitary bound for the shift shift series. So let's examine this bound for the infinite, for the two infinite classes of shift uh, anomaly free shift series. So first example is the shift shift theory coupled to the nine tensors with SVN times SVN gauge group and two by fundamental hypermultiplex. And this theory is anomaly free for any N, and this is the solution for the anomaly cancellation. <coughs> However, as I said, string theory realization is known only for N is equal to eight or less than eight. And in this superreptive theory, we will consider a superreptive string with the charge given by this. And by using anomaly flow, you can compute the central charges after removing central mass degrees of freedom. Left moving central charge for this string is given by eight and right moving central charge is empty. And the top anomaly is non-trivial only for the second SUN gauge group. Okay, top anomaly is trivial for the first SUN and SU to left flavor symmetry. And we have current algebra for the second SUN. And then we have unitarity bound like this. And by solving this bound, we find the N in this SUN gauge group should be less than or equal to nine. Okay, if n is bigger than nine, then it means we'll have another non-unitary string configuration in shift supergravity theory. So therefore, the supergravity theory of this type with n bigger than nine are in the swamp plant. So this is our claim, okay? So it looks like we have an infinite family of anomaly free shift supergravity theories of this type. However, almost all of them are inconsistent. Okay, the, the only constant series, uh, the series with the gauge group rank less than or equal to A. Okay, interestingly, this bound involved uh, this string theory realization, but there is one more theory with SUN, uh, SUN nine times SUN, uh, SUN nine times SUN nine gauge symmetry, which is not realized yet in the string theory. So it's an interesting question if we can find string uh, theory realization for the theory with the SU9 times SU9. So this is one open question, but the other theories are all killed. So string Lampos principle seems to be, again, working except one example, one exception, SU9 times SU9 in this family. So what about the second example? The second example is the theory coupled to the 8K plus 9 tensors and K EA gauge groups. This theory is again anomaly free for arbitrary K, and this is the solution found in this paper. And we tested this theory with the string of charge given by this and found that this solution cannot satisfy this unitary bound for any K. Okay? So all the theories with this solution violate this bound. So it means they belong to the swamp plant. All this class belong to the swamp plant. But interestingly, we found that the theories with the K equal one and two admit another solution to the anomaly cancellation. Okay, I didn't present in this slide, but they have another solution other than this one. And by using the strings, we couldn't find any non-unitary string configuration for these cases when k equal one and two. Okay, indeed, these theories with k equal one and two are realized in M theory. Okay, so string Lampos principle in this class, this infinite class, is basically verified. Okay, so. Let me summarize and conclude. So some plan the program aims to find universal properties of consistent 
quantum gravity theory is based on what lives, uh, what we learn from the string theory and completeness of string spectrum and consistency of the string world theory can provide new interesting sampling conditions, as we saw. And we examined the unit relations between central charge and levels for the current algebra in 2D theories on the strings and found new sample and bound on the rank of the gauge groups. And we ruled out many, actually infinite number of consistent looking theories, okay? And we can think about the following problems. Firstly, can we, first question is, can we find a bound, a new bound for the supergravity theories in dimension less than six? Along this direction, I studied 5D supergravity theories preserving a supersymmetry with the cards, terrorism, and buffer. And we found by using the same technique, by using the string proofs, and we found some very interesting bound on the rank of the gauge symmetry in terms of the levels of the John Simon's terms in the low energy effective theory. And second problem is whether we can get more refined bound on the rank of the bulk gauge group. For example, in this talk, we saw only the upper bound on the rank, okay? But in fact, not all the ranks and the gauge groups within the bound are realized in string theory, okay? For example, in seven dimensions, bound is like how many? 19. But not all the theories are realized. Not all the theories between rank 19 and zero are realized in the string theory. So we can try to find some refined bound on the rank of the gauge group. And so some interesting refinement for the superlative theories with the shift and supersymmetry in dimension 9 and 7 were discussed in string conference this year by Buffer. So you can have a look at his uh, talk in YouTube. And lastly, it will, it will be very interesting to see if other types of brains can tell us more about the sample and the conditions. But yeah, it's open question. Okay, let me stop here. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah, I, I guess the quest, my question is related to the last uh, other, other types of brains. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what is the intuition you prefer to look in, into the worksheet of string rather than one dimension or nine or higher dimension or what volume? Uh, because uh, 2D string has anomalies on the world sheet. If you look, consider just one dimensional object or nine dimensional object, other dimensional object, there is no anomaly. So if you don't have anomaly, then it's a bit hard to extract some interesting information to use to constrain the bulk supergravity theories. So we are looking at, we were looking at basically some defect, which can support non-trivial anomaly and which we can compute the central charges or some other informa topological information by using anomaly inflow and so on. And we found the strings are the easy one, easiest one actually to use. So but basically you can try to consider other types of defect like in even dimensions. Yeah, so but what if you consider, let's say, M2 brain? M2 brains, M2 brains in M theory, you mean, okay? Yes. But M2 brains, the world volume theory is a three dimensional theory. In that case, I don't know how to extract some interesting information about the world volume theories by using anomalies was animal inflow or something else. So you can try to get some information by using other method, but at this moment, I don't have a very clear idea to extract some information about the world series and also information about the unitarity of uh, the series living on M2 brains. But it's, yeah, worth studying. I see. Okay, an another one maybe related. Um, it seems you always, um, assume the uh, word sheet theory is a CFT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is that guaranteed to be true? I mean, you're in a... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, uh, so in supergravity theory, we have the, uh, some mass scale, which is given, uh, set by the Planck constant, right? Mm -hmm. Low energy limit means uh, we are sending the... So on the world sheet, 
low taking low energy means that we are taking Planck constant on the world to infinity. So it means we have no other scales. So we expect that the world theory flows to a CFT because there is no other scale. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Is there is this possible other um, two dimensional defect like uh, things with, with which can support some uh, something like a 2D gravity theory, like a JT or something like that? JT, it's interesting question, but I haven't thought about the JT gravity. Yeah. So in this uh, talk and in the works, which I have done, I just focused on the usual Einstein supergravity with uh, uh, preserving some amount of the square symmetry. JT is an interesting question. I see, thanks. Any other questions? Um, I have one question. So if this, this uh, central charge and it is RG, mm -hmm. uh, the theory do not saturate the bound, do you have some idea about the theory that compensate this gap? Uh, in left moving sector, so let so if if this hatcher is bound, the left moving sector is just a Carot algebra, some some yeah, yeah, lumino yeah. witten type model. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, if they do not, uh, is the theory do not yeah, yeah, satisfy? Yeah. Do you have some uh, thought about what 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 kind of theory gaps of the this? <laughs> Yeah, it's a very good question, and actually, it's very interesting. So, for example, uh -huh. if you look at this one, rank nine, yeah. shade three. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, this theory has uh -huh. rank nine, so it seems that it cannot support such a large rank, uh, sorry, the central charge is 16 yeah. degrees, middle, right? Uh -huh. But interestingly, the world theory on this supergravity theory support level two EA current algebra. Okay. And their central charge contribution is 15 plus half. 15 plus half, okay. Sorry, sorry, 15, yeah, 15 plus a half. And together there is U1 current okay. because you have extra U1. So you okay. have a 16 plus a half. Okay. Then half is missing, right? Yeah, yeah. Interestingly, this half, turns out to be uh, ising. Okay. So it's like the string for uh -huh. CHL uh, string theory. Uh -huh. <laughs> so strings in this CHL string uh -huh. should involve ising in okay. each one. Yeah. It's already known, actually. So it's, oh, it's already, already known. known. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite non trivial. Then what about this rank one case? It seems it's very hard to saturate the bound. Yeah. Okay. It turns yeah. out that in this case, there is enhancement of the super symmetry. Okay. String for this series has enhanced 8,8 super symmetry. Uh -huh. By analyzing the world's anomaly and so on, you can uh -huh. show world's degrees of freedom consistent only of central mass degrees of freedom, nothing uh -huh. else. Uh-huh. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay, I see. Uh -huh. But yeah, it's very good question. I didn't analyze the other cases, for example, in seven dimensions, uh -huh. with rank seven, five, and three. But yeah, it, it, they should be. But I, I don't know. I have to work out. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, another question with what? Um, yeah, you look. So essentially, what you did is the anomaly of this uh, B field, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. B field. So it's, it's a very basic question, but why do you look at the anomaly B field? Is there any some anomaly for like a, like a tens, like a metric tensor, like a G or for, 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 or for worksheet? No. <laughs> no. Because all this, all this string basically coupled to the B field. It okay. has anom gravitational anomaly, basically, uh -huh, but uh -huh. gravitational anomaly is, how can I say, reflected in the variation of the two-form gauge field. Oh, two-form gauge, okay. Yeah, yeah. I see. Okay, I see, I see, I see. That's a good short mechanism, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. 
I see. Um, any other questions from audience? Okay, if not, let's thank the teacher again for some, <laughs> some lesson. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <Mr. laughs> okay, I will stop the recording.